we're going to talk about fetal positioning. So that has to do with the pelvis and our passenger, the baby. Nice contrast here for this part in particular. We're referring, so when we're talking about fetal positioning, we're talking about the relationship of the landmarks on the baby, which we're gonna talk about in a second. We're gonna talk about, so the landmarks in relationship to the mom's four quadrant pelvis. And I'll be talking about all this as I go. During descent, the fetal position is going to change to maneuver all the changes of the pelvis. Remember, some parts are more narrow, some parts are a little wider. So in order for the fetus to fit through the pelvis, it's going to have to make some adjustments. What I'm going to describe now is what presenting part is touching what part of the pelvis. So first we're going to know, is it mom's right side or left side? So did I say your right side or left side? No. Is it ever about the nurse? No, it's never about you. Never, sorry. It's about the patient. So patient, her right, her left. So figure out, is it mom's right or mom's left that the presenting part is touching? The presenting part, now we're at landmarks. The the landmarks of the presenting parts are the occiput. Remember from anatomy, the occiput is the back of the head. So the back of the baby's head. The next one is the mentum. Anybody remember mentum? It's the chin. It's the chin. Sometimes the chin is the presenting part. Probably more likely the face, but we're labeling it the chin, the mentum. Next is cute little baby bottom sacrum. And lastly, the acromium, acromium process, the shoulder. So O is for occiput, M is for mentum, S is for sacrum, and A is for acromium process. The third thing we're going to talk about is it the presenting part, that landmark of the presenting part, is it touching the anterior, the posterior, or the transverse of mom's pelvis? A typical delivery that we vote for that works the very, very best is ROA or LOA. That would be right so the right side, occiput here, anterior. So the way to figure this out is to always remember what is that part touching on mom's pelvis. Do not think about which way is the baby facing. That's going to give you the wrong answer on a test. So what part of the baby is touching what part of mom's pelvis. This is ROA, right occiput anterior. We like this one. The other one we like that makes delivery so much nicer for everybody involved is left occiput anterior. So I'm going to put the baby up here so you can see. It's mom's left, it's the occiput, the back of the baby's head, and it's anterior, it's towards the front. This would be what? Left, we're still left side, we're still occiput, and now this baby is transverse. What about this one? We're still left, we're still occiput, and now the occiput is to mom's back. It's posterior. Left, occiput, posterior. Okay, you do it. 
which side? What's the part that's touching mom's pelvis? This one is right occiput transverse. How about this? Right occiput anterior. So here's anterior transverse posterior. What side is it on? It's mom's left. What's the presenting part that we're talking about? Oh, sorry. What's the presenting part that we're talking about? We're talking about the sacrum this time. So it's left sacrum anterior. How about this one? Left sacrum posterior and this left sacrum transverse okay along with fetal position we need to talk about the OP position occipital posterior position which you just learned about so that means the occiput is posterior. It could be on the right side. It could be on the left side. Sometimes it's even straight. We're just going to deal with right side or left side right now. When this happens, that, there are many things that go along with when the baby is in that position. The back of the baby's head, the occiput, is one of the hardest bones of the baby's skull. Picture that pushing during labor on her sacrum or near, right near her sacrum. So what's going to happen? She's going to have a really, really, really bad backache. Some women experience this as leg pain. They may feel uh, pain in their thighs, going down their thighs. And why do we even bother talking about this? It's because it is not a position that is good for labor. It's a common position because the baby's going to maneuver the pelvis and it's going to land this way sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't finish rotating all the way. And that's fine too. So it usually gives us a longer labor, more back or leg pain, and like I said, the baby isn't maneuvering the pelvis quite the way that we usually want it to. This might be just a temporary thing to have the baby OP, occiput posterior, but sometimes it stays that way. So reasons for the pain we just talked about is the occiput is pressing on her sacrum. So what does a nurse do about that? We change mom's position to promote rotation and descent of the fetus. Um, sometimes we have her on her knees and she's leaning against the back of the bed, so kind of a modified hands and knees. Sometimes she's standing up with her legs about shoulder width apart and leaning forward on a, a table or something. Sometimes she's sitting and doing that with her legs wide opened up. So there are many different variations we can do with this. But anywhere where she's leaning forward is going to feel good on her back because that's going to take, if she's leaning forward, it's going to take the pressure off her back. And it's going to facilitate that fetus to rotate to OA because the weight of the baby will help it rotate. So hands and knees or some variation of that. Side lying might help. Squatting is excellent because that opens up the pelvis even up to about a centimeter, which is huge when we're talking baby talk. 
sitting, so sitting in the, uh, with her, they call it Taylor sitting, so with her ankles crossed, but her legs wide open, kneeling or standing leaning forward, which we talked about. These are positions that help to lessen the pain by getting the baby's head off of the pelvis. The doctor may need to use forceps to help rotate the baby. So if the baby stays in the OP position and they may be having a hard time getting the baby to finish rotating, they might need to use forceps to help with that. Vacuum extractor isn't as effective to do that, so, but they might try it. Um, sometimes baby doesn't rotate and isn't fitting through the pelvis, and so mom might need to have a C-section. So these are reasons why the OP position is significant during labor.